Hello there, this is Kush from creativepadphotography.com. Welcome back to another tutorial on Photoshop. This time we'll be learning how to create a spiral looking panorama like this. So we have this image of a skyline here and uh, it'll involve a couple of steps. So let's get started with the first step. So the first important step is that when you have your panorama, that image should be straight. So you can right now see this image is slightly tilted upward. So the horizon is not completely straight and where the problem in can come is if it's not straight ultimately the left and the right parts of this image are going to come together so if they're not straight you can have this problem in the leveling so you so this is like a what not to do image so so the first thing is to just straighten this image you can use your crop tool here so once you have your crop tool selected you have this straighten ruler here so just draw using this ruler just draw a straight line so we're telling Photoshop what should be straight in this image which is this C line the horizon line and once you have this just leave it and photoshop will till this image straighten it and just press enter to crop this of course you're going to lose a bit of it but at least you'll get a straight image now the second important part here is after you straighten the images again that we know that the left and the right parts are going to come together so what is here should be uh, similar to what is what is it so so there are two steps involved in this the first step to make sure you know there's uh, there's no difference is that uh, if you see this part here the building is only half in view and it's got cropped here and so when these two come together this half building won't really look good so try to crop this image in such a way that uh, the extreme part of it is as open as possible or as empty as possible so you can see that they, we've got a good gap here between this building so I can just crop it from this side and maybe we can crop this still here because there's more space here and that should be good so now I can press enter so now even that problem is gone now the third step is that even the exposure or the color related to these areas the left and the right should be as similar as possible for example the sky is pretty much okay but maybe we need to make some changes in the water because it's just slightly bright here and slightly dark here and if you don't um, do this again if I show you this what not to do image you can have this problem so you can see here you can see a clear line between uh, these two parts you can see them distinctly and you don't want them you want to avoid this as much as possible I don't know if you can notice but you can see the same thing line here also so it may not be completely possible to get rid of that but as much as you can you should try right so what you need to do in order, in order to do that is just create a duplicate layer of this okay and flip this horizontally so once the this layer is selected just go to image just go to edit go to transform and flip this horizontally so and then what you want to do is you want to open up a layer mask so if you don't know much about layer masking, I suggest you check out my course called Photoshop for Beginners, which has all the basics of Photoshop uh, that are required for a photographer. So the link is given in the description of this video. Right. So once you have a layer mask, just before opening the layer mask, just press your Alt or Option key so that when you press that and you open a layer mask, you automatically open a black layer mask. And a black layer mask means that you're not seeing this top image. What you're seeing is still the bottom layer. And then we're going to be painting white on it to reveal stuff from top. That's how layer masking works. So once you have your black layer mask, what you can do is the first thing we'll try to correct is the difference in the water. So you can choose any side, the left or the right. Let's go with the right side. So just choose your selection tool and choose this part first so just make a selection like this and the reason you do that is because we will be using a gradient tool to paint with the white color so the effect right now we only want to copy the water here so the effect should not come on the whole uh, area right otherwise it can come on the building and other things also here which you don't want so having the selection make sure that your painting only gets restricted to this part so once you have this select your gradient tool and select make sure the color is white and then just drag this slightly so you can see that we're starting to get that dark exposure from here so you can do that a couple of times and now this is pretty much similar to this you can even use a paintbrush if you want and increase the opacity So 
you can see now this part is exactly similar to this part. Okay. Now, as far as the sky is concerned, it's pretty much similar. So you don't need to make too much of uh, a difference, but we'll still, just to make things short, we'll still do the same thing. So I'm just going to select this extreme part of the sky here, and I'll be just using the layer mask, the selection, and I'm just using the paint brush with white color selected. I'm just going to do this. So you can see that it's just copied this. It's not copied, it's just revealing this layer from below. And the right part of this layer is the left part here. So, and of course, what you want to avoid is that you don't want to go too down here because you can see now the building starts to get revealed, which was, which was actually this building. So you can just switch over as the advantage of having a layer mask and just don't do it here. Just leave this part. Right, so I'll press Control plus D to deselect. And now we just got a bit of... Um, you know the line here because of our selection so what you can do here in order to get rid of this is just use the clone stamp tool now before you can do that just merge these two layers together how you can do that is select both of them then press command or control option that's alt shift and e so that's control alt shift and e together so it's going to just merge these two layers on a separate layer like this so once that's the case you can use your clone stamp tool to just just decrease the size of this and copy press alt to copy something here and just drag it along this line so you can see now we've kind of got uh, rid of that i can just increase the opacity of this clone stamp tool just to make things faster so i'll just do this once again Right, so now our left and the right part are pretty much similar. We've got rid of the line. Now it's the time to create that uh, spiral effect. Right, so how you do that is you first have to turn this image into a square. So go to image, then go to um, image size. And by default, the width and the height will be locked. That means you'll see this line. So just unlock them and then change the amount of pixels that you see in width, uh, change it to what you see in height. So that's how a square is formed. So I'm just going to do this. And I'm going to click on OK. And it's going to turn this into... So I'm just going to zoom in this. So this is what we're seeing right now. Right now it doesn't make too much sense, but there are two more steps involved. After you've done this, just go to Transform from Edit Menu and click on flip vertical right so once you've done this there's just one last step involved which is to you have to go to filter then you have to go to distort and select this option called as polar coordinates right and just click on ok so you can see that we've got a nice looking uh, spiral effect so if I just zoom into this uh, you can't see so if I compare it to the earlier image this one you can see that this the line the separating line here which was making things distinct is no longer visible uh, you don't see any line on the sky and overall this image looks much better so that's how you create a spiral looking 3d planet in photoshop and one thing i would just like to point out is that if you still see the line and if there's some sort of distinction uh, uh, visible even after doing this what you can do is you can even do the clone stamping process from here when you've ultimately created for example if i'm seeing this line here if, let me zoom in in this what not to do image so if i'm seeing this line i can even do this process after i complete this right but of course the leveling has to be done before that cannot be taken care of but i can easily if i have a clone stamp tool i can just do something like this and try to get rid of the lines of course you'll have to do it in a much more subtle manner by decreasing the opacity but that's another option that you have but somehow it's always better to just get things right in your original image and then just turn this and uh, get this so i hope you like this video and i'll see you in the next video don't forget to subscribe don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to check out my course called photoshop for beginners the link is given in the description of this video it's available on udemy so i'll see you uh, in the next video bye for now